This is one of the largest or longest questions you'll ever have to answer at GCSE level, an 11 marker. And we're asked to describe, that's the key, um, the command word, describe how a mould is made for sand casting. But we're also told that we can use notes and or sketches. And the method I'm going to demonstrate for you is primarily sketches. Um, but there, you could just do it as a series of bullet points, as a series of lists. So here we go. So we always need to start off with a pattern in two halves. Um, a pattern represents the product that you want to make, but it's probably made of wood, um, MDF or something like that, or plaster. The next step is to start to draw um, I've put a ground line down there because we're going to sort of work along along it. Um, and you can see that I've put one half of the pattern um, on the ground and then around it. This is a cross sectional view of a box. And that box is called a drag. And over the pattern, we then put some parting powder. It's a bit like talcum powder to help separate um, things later. The next step is to start to fill it with green sand. Uh, this is an oil bonded sand and you need to ram it down to get um, some sort of effect. So you can sort of see here we've already got probably about four or five marks. Um, one for describing the pattern, one for explaining the drag, the parting powder is another mark and then the green sand another one and then ramming it down to get it into all, um, a nice solid finish um, is another mark. But I've realized that we need that I was working left to right and I now need to make it absolutely clear that the next diagram is is, is in sequence. But because it's on the next line, I've added some numbers. So step four in this particular case, um, there's a, quite a lot going on here. Um, so I'll explain each one in turn. First of all, the drag is flipped upside down. Next, the cope, which is just another empty box, basically, or a box frame, is placed around the top of it and dropped onto the top. And we have the sprue pins, which are basically just bits of wood, um, slightly tapered, uh, are placed in, in there as well, along with the other half of the pattern. Now, rather than drawing yet, I'm running out of space here, so rather than drawing it um, more, I'm just going to describe the next two straight stages um, like so. So step five is to compact the green sand into the cope. And then step six will be to separate the cope and the drag to carefully remove the pattern and the pins. So all the red items will be taken out, which will leave lots of holes. But I'm now going to draw the next step, which is reassembling the mould ready for pouring. And what I've done here is I've labelled all the different parts of the mould that we need ready for the pour. So the main, the important bit is the cavity in the middle where the patterns have come out. Um, you can see that where the sprue pins were taken out, we've now got these holes uh, which act as the runner where the metal is going to be, molten metal is going to be poured in and the riser where it's going to rise up to the top so we know that it's full. Um, you'll see that I've added a little basin because as we pour the metal in, it's quite difficult to get into a small hole. So we need a slightly larger sort of cavity to put it into. Um, and then you'll notice all the way through my drawings, I've identified the sand with hatching. Um, it, rather than trying to colour it in, it was difficult enough colouring in the, the patterns and the sprue pins. Um, that will give you more than enough for your 11 marks. Um, and if you go through each step in turn, uh, logically, especially if you've seen it, it's much easier to see it or watch a video of it. Um, but those five diagrams will be more than enough to explain uh, what's going on. You'll notice I have used a couple of steps there as well, just to, just to avoid dr drawing too much, because sometimes it does take a long time. Um, but for an 11 mark question, it's worth spending a bit of time and getting it right.